Dog cat vaccines. Are vaccines for your dogs and cats safe, effective? Can they potentially even be harming your pets? Get the scoop in this video. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome, click there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and then when you click that link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book. Recently, I released a video, things I wouldn't do since I retired being a veterinarian. I talked about issues such as vaccines, my maybe slightly alternative stance on it. Not everybody was super positive. Here are five key points, my big issues that I have with vaccines for our dogs and cats. Number one, the number of vaccines. For dogs, we have the core vaccines of distemper, adenoparvovirus, and the rabies vaccine. Then there are the other non-core vaccines, which many veterinarians still recommend. Leptospirosis, Lyme disease, Bordetella, influenza. In my personal opinion, that is a lot of things we're potentially vaccinating our dogs for. Then for our cats, we have the core vaccines, FVRCP, the two respiratory viruses, and panleukopenia, along with the rabies vaccine. Then there are the non-core vaccines, feline leukemia virus vaccine, FIV virus vaccine, potentially vaccinating for chlamydia, and in some cases, even FIP is still advised. My opinion, that's just way too many vaccines given far too frequently. So imagine your dog, your cat, getting all those vaccines, including those non-core vaccines, and then frequently getting them. So in many cases, the vaccine regimens are requiring for like yearly non-core vaccines. I mean, that is a lot of vaccines that potentially your dogs and cats are getting on a yearly basis. More vaccines more often, more chance for vaccine side effects. My second point, the efficacy of the vaccine. Does this vaccine even work? Consider the Lyme disease vaccine for our dogs. Obviously, no one wants their dog to get Lyme disease, but there are legitimate concerns about the Lyme disease vaccine. Number one, it's not near as effective as most of the other vaccines. You're trying to vaccinate against a spirochete. It's very different than trying to vaccinate it against a virus. You're seeing the highest incidence of vaccine side effects with the Lyme disease vaccine. In this one Banfield study of 1.2 million vaccinated dogs, the Lyme disease vaccine produced most vaccine adverse side effects within three days than any other canine vaccine. Or vaccinating your cat against FIV, chlamydia, maybe even FIP. None of those vaccines are especially effective, and in many cases, they're associated with an increased number of adverse events. My third point, duration of immunity. How long do these vaccines actually last? There has been a fair amount of research into the duration of immunity. You know, Dr. Ronald Schultz at the University of Madison in Wisconsin. He's published extensively on canine duration of immunity. So how is it that people can have a 10-year duration of immunity, Yet, in many cases, we're still vaccinating dogs and cats yearly for rabies. Some of these studies have shown a minimum duration of immunity of the parvo vaccine to be seven years and more. Yet, we're still doing it at a minimum every three years. The rabies vaccine, it's shown minimum duration of immunity of somewhere between three years to seven years. Yet, in many cases, many animals are getting the rabies vaccine yearly. Why is this? Why have we yet to take some of the duration of immunity studies and incorporate that into advised vaccine schedules for dogs and cats. My own cat, my own dog, they are no longer getting any vaccines. Point number four, vaccine volume. So how is it that one cc of rabies vaccine, this is the standard amount, we're giving the same amount to a Great Dane that we would be giving to a tiny little five pound chihuahua? That makes no sense. You'd think this would have been studied, right? But it turns out when a vaccine manufacturer has to prove to the FDA, okay, it's safe, our vaccine is effective, they just have to prove that it's safe, that it produces adequate immune levels in an average size dog, say a 50 pound dog. They're not looking at all breeds, all sizes. And then when you look at reported incidents of VAEs, vaccine adverse events, there's a clear correlation between the size of the dog, so the smaller the dog, they have more vaccine side effects. Why is that? Look at the volume of vaccine we're giving them. When I went to go get my third COVID booster, yes, CASP, even I get vaccines, guess what? I got half the volume. Why? Because they've seen that when you get half the volume, they have a lower incidence of vaccine side effects. So if less volume of vaccines mean lower incidence of adverse events in people, 
guess what? Probably means the same thing in our animals. Point number five, vaccine side effects. Vaccines, like many other drugs, they have side effects, especially when it's something that you're injecting into your dog, you're injecting into your cat, and you're stimulating your immune system to produce an immune response. Ultimately though, what we're trying to do is balance the risk of the side effect versus the risk of the disease. I'm sure many of us went through that same argument when we're trying to make the decision. Do I get vaccinated against COVID-19 or do I not? Ultimately, that's probably what's most important about this video. Like, is it safe for you to give X vaccine to your dog, to your cat, and, or am I potentially gonna harm them? The Canadian Vet Journal, they published a paper, suspected adverse reactions to vaccinations in dogs and cats. They make the statement that the risk is relatively low, but they do list a number of serious potential adverse events. Allergic reactions, anaphylaxis, vomiting, diarrhea, lethargy, loss of consciousness, injection site reactions, pain, fever, vasculitis. Injection site sarcoma, injection site cancer, autoimmune disorders, neurologic disorders, and even death. The incidence of many of those side effects, it is extremely low, but it is there. Lyme disease vaccine, it's a non-core vaccine but it's reported to have the highest incidence of side effects. It contains an outer surface protein and that can cause the immune system to produce an autoimmune response. They're seeing cases of nephritis, that's kidney disease, or autoantibodies from the vaccine. Well, vaccinating your cat for the feline leukemia virus vaccine. We've seen a clear correlation between the feline leukemia virus vaccine and injection site sarcomas, that's cancer. Most veterinarians who've been in practice for any period of time, they've seen a case of injection site sarcoma. It's this horrible type of cancer, it sends out these tentacles, and it's something which you can't completely remove in surgery. Unfortunately, you know, if a cat is to get injection site sarcoma, this type of cancer, they're not gonna survive it because it isn't treatable. And that's all from a vaccine. If I were to get a little puppy again, would I give him vaccines? Yes, I would vaccinate him for distemper virus and parvovirus. A little kitten, yeah, I'd give the FERCP vaccines. But I sure wouldn't be doing multiple vaccines, non-core vaccines, every year vaccines at all. Thanks again for watching this edition of Entry Secrets. I hope you found it helpful. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign for notifications, and then you click that link directly in the box below. I can send you a copy of my free book.